liberal media is melting See, down. Is that if you want to be prime minister, you get your mandate from the Canadian people, not from the There was a desire for more international students. There was a desire for more international students. If humans truly have nine lives, Trudeau is truly an outlier. The guy must have 19 lives, maybe even more than 20. He once again has survived a mutiny for how long? We don't know. We're also going to take a look at how Canadian politics is going the way of Ric Flair. That's right. We are now in the era of Ric Flair style politics. I'll give you the full explanation to that. I also apologize in advance for my voice. I know it's a little coarse right now, but I ended up catching a cold. It's unavoidable. So this is the voice we're going to have for this video. Now you just saw a snippet of Justin Trudeau stating that Canadians want more international students. Let's take a look and see if that theory actually holds up. Yeah. Okay, so moving on from that, uh, that is not the answer the Canadian people want to hear, Justin. But there is good news to that because yesterday it was announced that the Trudeau government will be making further cuts to Canada's immigration program. It's not quite where we need it to be, obviously, but it's a sign, it shows us, that public opinion is working. They are seeing the errors of their ways but not quite to the extent we need it, not even close, but at least, at least we're starting to see some sort of difference. Now, before we keep going into the video, I just want to share a personal announcement, one that actually might benefit you if you come up to my neck of the woods. We just signed a lease for a new restaurant space, so this is gonna be pretty cool. Take a look, I'm gonna take you on a walking tour right now of the premises of the future restaurant. Okay, so welcome to the future restaurant. We don't even have a name for it yet, but this is the space in its raw form. Uh, this used to be a restaurant space uh, back in the day, still has a grody carpet that needs to be done away with. Um, and over here, you can see this men's washroom. We're gonna be tearing that out completely to make more space for people to eat by those front windows and enjoy the uh, street view while they're having a bite. Uh, this kitchen you see here, everything's being taken out. That oven's being taken out. The hood's been taken out. We're tearing all that out. That's all going to be seating space for our customers. And um, so I'm also going to be taking out this counter. I'll show you footage of myself getting that done. And this is going to be the general kitchen area. We will be extending it just a little bit. Lots of work ahead. That much is for sure. So one thing I'm looking forward to once this thing launches is I do plan on having you actual three oceans viewers coming in to our place, enjoying a bite while we can talk about politics and I can tell you all about the area, point you in the direction tourists don't know about because, well, tourists have a way of kind of dampering things. Uh, so here's the work that I did since uh, then. That counter took a hell of a lot of work and I'm still not done. I'm going to be going back in tomorrow and putting more work into it. But look at all that wood. Look at all that wood. That's just from the counter that I pulled off so far. And I'm still not done pulling this goddamn thing apart. I can't wait until that part's over. And that's when we can get to the real meat of the matter. Do you know what's great when you've got a sore throat? Hot chocolate. Okay, so now the main event. Ding, ding, ding. I'm not going to run any footage of Ric Flair while we talk about Ric Flair style politics because for those of you who aren't in the know, the WWE are huge copyright hawks and even though my channel is not monetized yet, I'm just not going to go there. Um, I've got nothing to lose monetarily, but still who knows if it might bite you in the future. Um, Vince McMahon is gone, but his legacy remains. Okay, so Ric Flair style politics. What do I mean by that? Well, for those of you who might not be familiar with wrestling and therefore Ric Flair, he is known as the dirtiest player in the game. So out of all the wrestlers throughout the history of the WWE and other federations like WCW, Ric Flair has spent the vast majority of his career as a heel, aka a bad guy. That's what he specialized in, is being a bad guy. Now, in real life, 
if you were, if you're actually like Ric Flair in real life, you're an asshole. And that's what Justin Trudeau is. We're not going to beat around the bush. And I'm not even being partisan in saying that. That's just the fact of the matter. But the liberals have tried to use coalitions to take over government in the past. Okay. This happened under Stefan Dion's watch and it's happening again now under Justin Trudeau. Instead of trying to claim power, he's trying to cling to power through coalitions that violate the will of the people. All right. There's a reason the liberals were brought into power on like as a minority government because only a minority of Canadians actually approved of that. And we sure as hell don't want a majority government that's made up of liberals and the NDP. A lot of liberals say that too. They don't want the NDP. They don't want anything, any part of it. So what we're going to look at is how this maneuver is now starting to run off into the province. And I'm referring to BC right now. The BC elections are happening. We see how down to the wire it is. And at the time I'm shooting this video, BC still does not have a leader. It's undetermined. But it's been reported that David Eby has been trying to cozy up to the BC Greens to get them to prop him up so that he gets to keep power. And that's disappointing because that is where I'm nonpartisan. This is dirty, dirty politics, no matter who does it. I don't care if it's the Conservatives, the Liberal, or the NDP. Anyone who does this is a piece of shit. Run the footage. I spoke with David Eby this morning. I have not spoken with John Rustad. BC Green Party leader Sonia Furstenau may have lost in a new riding on election day, but now she holds the power to help the BC NDP or the BC Conservatives form government. The NDP is leading or elected in 46 seats, the Conservatives in 45 and the Greens too. Furstenau says she didn't pick up the phone when John Rust had called her because she didn't recognize the number. She has concerns about some members of his party. There have been statements made by conservative candidates that are truly disturbing, racist, dehumanizing, homophobic, and conspiratorial. Some of these candidates have been elected, and I have yet to see a satisfactory response from John Rustad around this. The two Green MLAs who were elected are following First and Al's lead. I certainly support uh, Sonia's interpretation and, and path forward. Also have the same concerns about some of the uh, statements made by Conservative candidates and, and support Sonia's assessment and path forward in this. First and now says she will stay on as leader to guide her party and points to their platform as a base for any potential governing deal. Like a strong commitment on a consumer carbon tax, that might be something that they draw attention to and an even strengthening environmental regulations and, and uh, the, the mechanisms pushing the province towards a, a low carbon future. A particular sticking point seems like it may emerge around the LNG project in Squamish. The great unknown is the final vote tally. Elections BC says that will take place from October 26th to 28th. It will include counting almost 50,000 absentee and mail-in ballots and automatic recounts in two ridings, Surrey City Centre and Juan de Fuca Malahat, where the vote differences are 100 or fewer. Mira Baines, CBC News, Vancouver. Now that is something I'd love to hear about from you, like how you feel about this. Do you think David Eby is playing fair or do you think that coalition governments, no matter who does it, should be banned? With that said, I want to leave you guys off with the last time we had a real leader in parliament. I'm going to play for you an archived video of Stephen Harper calling out the Liberals, the NDP and the Bloc when they tried to form a coalition to take over the government. To me, this was a very shameful footnote in Canada's history. And as we're seeing now under the Trudeau Liberals, it's clearly not going away. We have to tackle this problem. Let's take a look. Mr. Speaker, the highest, the highest principle of Canadian democracy is that if you want to be Prime Minister, you get your mandate from the Canadian people, not from the... Speaker, this deal that the leader of the Liberal Party 
has made with the separatists is a betrayal of the voters of this country, a betrayal of the best interests of our economy, a betrayal of the best interests of our country, and we will fight it with every means. Every member of this House has received a mandate from the Canadian people to deliver a Deliver a government that will face the economic crisis. The Prime Minister failed. The Prime Minister doesn't have the support of this House anymore. Will he allow a vote to test if he has really the confidence of this House as it must be in a de de parliamentary democracy? Order the right honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, not a single member of this House, not even a member of the bloc, received a mandate to have a government in which the separatists would be part of the coalition. Mr. Speaker, if the leader of the opposition thinks he has support for this, he should have the confidence to take this to the people of Canada who will reject it. Order, please. Order. I didn't hear any of this high and mighty uh, language and moral indignation from the Prime Minister when he signed a document along with myself and Mr. Duceppe a few years ago and sent it to Mr. That's the failure, and he wouldn't work with other parties to deliver a plan for the families of this country who are suffering in the economic circumstances we're in. Mr. Speaker, how can Canadians have any confidence in this Conservative government? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, in an internal letter today, the leader of the Bloc Québécois says, the coalition formed by the Liberal Party and the NDP supported by the Bloc will take control of the administration of the federal state. We will have the creation of a mechanism of permanent consultation empowering the Bloc Québécois on every question of importance, notably concerning the adoption of the budget. Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister, this government, this party has never and will never sign a document like that. He's saying, he's saying that we liberals are sold in Canada to the separatists and his Quebec MPs, his Quebec MPs are saying that the separatists are sold their soul to the liberals. He needs to choose between these two lies. Canadians are fed up of his lies. The Canadian people made a choice to elect the Conservative Party to govern without the support of the separatists. Mr. Speaker, if the leader of the Liberal Party wants to become Prime Minister with the support of the separatists, he needs to put that option to the people of Canada. As a Democrat, I know that when a government is elected as a minority government, he has the responsibility to behave accordingly. The Prime Minister failed. He failed to address the economic crisis. He failed. And if he was a Democrat, he would allow this House to show how much he failed. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the Liberal Party failed to convince Canadians in the wisdom of his platform or in the sufficiency of his judgment to be Prime Minister of this country. And Mr. Speaker, if he wants to take the unprecedented scrap, uh, step of scrapping the results of an election campaign and forming for the first time in Canadian history a government entirely dependent on the support of separatists to run this country, then Mr. Speaker, he has the responsibility not to hide behind parliamentary niceties or deals, but to go to the people of Canada. When this Prime Minister was fighting to put firewalls around the province that we all love, I was fighting for clarity for this country. This is very simple. 
The leader of the Liberal Party wants to turn his back on the results of the last election. He wants to turn his back on the traditions of his own party, and he wants to form a coalition with the Quebec separatists. Mr. Speaker, he should either walk away from that or take it to the people. That really is something else, isn't it? Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. The Liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit 3oceans.ca. Once again, that's 3oceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.